Last month, we headed to Ducati, Australia's headquarters in Alexandria for the media launch of the Desert X. A group of Australia's best motor publications came together to get some real-world insights into Ducati's first true off-road offering. It was a well-spent couple of days on the bike. We covered 600 or so k's of highways, mountain roads, high-speed gravel roads, epic single track and more, all the way out to Bathurst and back, complete with Sydney Friday peak hour traffic to really sort us out. Being that I can't wait to get back out of the studio and back on the Desert X, here's our top 10 takeaways on the big ADV twin from Ducati. Ducati have obviously spent a huge amount of time perfecting the Desert X chassis. Its poise and balance is nothing short of superb, on road and especially off. The dirt friendly 27.6 degree rake with a relatively long 1608 millimeter wheelbase it aids stability both in the dirt and especially on high-speed tarmac sweepers. With the ample ground clearance, 250 millimeters, well thought out frame gusseting, and even a grab rail on the rear to pull yourself out of trouble, Ducati don't shy away from showcasing their off-road intentions all the sea. Well, you can't deny that the majority of ADV bikes these days look top heavy. And once they're full of fuel, they literally can be. So Ducati, have worked so hard to keep the center of gravity as low as possible in the Desert X. While the tank itself looks tall, the fuel load itself all sits around knee height and below when you're sitting on the bike. That tasty white tank simply arcing above the ECU and of course the air filter. This low fluid distribution alongside the L-Twins forward head running parallel to the ground means the bike is incredibly maneuverable off-road and incredibly stable when it's on the road. We've had a lot of questions about the Ducati Desert X suspension because for many, it's going to be a deal breaker in a big ADV bike. So, have Ducati made the right choice teaming up with Kayaba? In one word, yeah. Bolted into those massive Ford Triple Crowns are fully adjustable 46mm upside down stanchions and as a result, the front end feels solid and more than ready to take serious off-road punishment. While the bikes were basically new when we jumped on them, I think the bike I was on had 200 or so k's on it, the front end did feel a tad stiff. Everything's tight out of the factory. I backed off compression by two clicks and for my 70 kilos weight, that felt quite good. That said, jumping on Nick Selleck's bike, which is multi thousand k's into its run-in period, felt incredibly plush through that first 100 mils and the whole 230 mil a stroke, incredible support and poise. Even under big sharp edged hits at speed, I was pushed to get a harsh bottom out. And not until an unavoidable huge fire road puddle or ditch hit at speed did my wrist steal the end of Kayaba's stroke impacting its limit. Thankfully, it kept tracking true without a right ending kick. Testament to the solid internals KYB and Takati have pulled together for the Desert X. And this, alongside with the stock steering damper, made for a very consistent front end, handling everything we rode. On the back end, I guess one of our biggest niggles with the big HDV bikes, including the big Multistrada V4, is blowing through rear travel that the front end has tackled with so much poise. The Desert X has a rear Kayaba fully adjustable shock and it more than keeps up with the front end. It's 220mm up the back, so 10mm less than the front, but it's got a remote preload adjuster and on the road changes are quite easy and that definitely adds to that superbly balanced chassis feel we talked about earlier. On the flip side, it's a very, very long-legged road-going bike, but it's surprisingly well-planted and stable at speed. Far from a wallowing waterbed, Ducati haven't forgone their cornering prowess on the blacktop. And while the 21-inch front doesn't allow for super bike-like flicking and diving into corners, it changes direction surprisingly well, tracking beautifully and consistently, even more so when the tarmac is middled with potholes. With big ground clearance, the scraping pegs is the big ask that I doubt many are going to pull off unless dropping some more road-oriented tyres on, but I dare say that challenge will be accepted by more than a few now I've said it. Brembo 4-piston M50 radial calipers bite down onto twin 320mm front discs, while out back, a single 265mm disc is pulled up by a double-piston floating caliper, again by Brembo. To say they've got power and feel is an understatement. It's top shell superbike kit and then some. Yet with all the braking power in the world at your finger and toe tips, it's the tech behind them that really makes the Brembo shine. 
Ducati's work with Bosch on ABS makes every iteration of ABS before 22 seem like horse and car technology. The cornering ABS is brilliant. The brake setting is programmed to offer the best power when using it on-road, but incredible in feel and control when off-road. It's both lean and terrain sensitive and easily the best iteration of ABS I've ridden. The rear brake is a masterpiece. It's got a soft feel, yet amazing power and feedback. Backing it in has never been so easy for me. Turning the rear ABS off makes the Desert X perform like every bike you've ever ridden till the here and now. And for many, that may be the setting of choice. But that said, if you add a small level of ABS on the rear when in the dirt, suddenly the ability to lock up a little, yet be com in complete control, is just magic. We've talked about that impressive engine performance before, but all that raw power is channeled into multiple personalities thanks to the bike's electronic rider aid systems. The Desert X features six riding modes, a first for Ducati with sport, touring, urban, and wet, and then the off-road focus, enduro, and rally settings. All modes have your choice of three levels of engine brake control, eight levels of Ducati's traction control, four levels of Ducati wheelie control, is this Ducati's anti hooligan control? And it's three levels of ABS ranging from road to off-road, and finally, you can turn the ABS completely off in enduro and rally modes. I hear a ton of you sit up and listen right about now. Engine-wise, four power settings allow you to access full, high, and medium, and low maps, along with the ability to set your throttle response to dynamic or smooth. The enduro and rally modes in their base settings are a big step from the other four modes. In enduro mode, horsepower is restrained to a low, a mere 75 horsepower with dynamic response. It's possibly the most rider-friendly mode on the bike off-road by a long shot. So after a day with everything turned off tech-wise, enduro mode was a real eye-opener in just how much it works to keep you rubber side up. Impressive stuff. Of course, Rally Mode has you accessing all the Tesla Stratus power, 110 horsepower, for you to play on in the dirt. It's got dynamic throttle response, ABS is backed off to 1, and traction control was set to 2, and wheelie control is off. Rally Mode really allows you to send the Desert X, letting you step the bike out, exiting corners like you're a Dakar Pro, yet keeping it from swapping out underneath you. It's a surreal feeling knowing the bike is working with you and not trying to send you high siding into the scrub. Need to customize even further? Tune to your heart's content. I found taking photos of my settings on screen and making notes come end of the day really allowed me to tune the bike into how I wanted it. The display can be set in standard mode with a giant taco in the middle, or in rally mode with roadbook looking coordinates that can be toggled and reset by the handlebar from your left bar. All in all, the UI is pretty intuitive getting to the settings you need. My only complaint would be that getting out of some of the setting menus means you need to do just as many clicks as you did to get in there, and it's here that a home button would rock. But once you get the hang of it, it's logical and simple. Give yourself a day or two to get your head around the depth of tuning available though. Pirelli have pulled a road biased off-road rabbit out of the hat with their Scorpion Rally STR. It's exceptional on road, with a profile ready to lean and there's little to no noise in road vibration whatsoever. Off road, it's actually pretty usable despite its looks. Ducati and Pirelli working together to provide a tyre that complements the full capability suite the Desert X claims. It needs to be said though that putting dedicated off road rubber on the Desert X would transform it. First thoughts would head to the Motel's Tractionator adventure. Of course, that front guard may need to be pulled off for chunkier tyre clearance, and we're thinking a traditional enduro guard mounted under the bottom triple clamp would sort rocks wedging in there and look the goods, although handling at highway speeds may suffer. We got around 350 kilometres from the 21 litre tank with some spirited back road riding alongside single track, sandblasting and gravel roads. Ride a little more restrained and close to 380 kilometres should be possible if you don't mind hypermiling and drafting the old truck. Also of note is this may be one of the most accurate Ducati gauges ever. I ran the bike to zero kilometres range and after some idling into the servo, one shake of the tank had it feeling pretty damn empty. Interestingly, steel was used in the tank construction. 
all in the name of maximising space for precious fuel inside. Ducati engineers found that a plastic poly material or the like would lose up to one and a half litres internally. Of course, the epic looking factory auxiliary rear tank we've all seen on the promo videos will be available by the time you watch this. And that adds another eight litres to your fuel load. It's a sweet system. When you get low in the main tank, you simply switch to the rear and it dumps all its fuel to the front tank in one hit. And that'll get you somewhere around 150 kilometres further down the trail. And that's not bad at all for us at such a big country. The stock seat is a very sort of proposition. Enough ease of movement when sitting or standing and enough comfort for burning highway kilometres. It comes off easily and underneath you'll find a 12 volt outlet and a USB underneath. And there's another 12 volt blank port sitting just under your front bearing. Of course, if off-road is your focus, you may want to step to the optional rally seat, which looks the goods. And also of note, the stock seat height of 875mm is replaceable with a 20mm lower variant and a 25mm higher one for taller riders. Get that right and the Desert X will be a true kilometre cruncher. Wind-wise, the stock windscreen is a long, long way forward in true Dakar rally style. No drama with my full face even coming close to it. So while it provides good protection at lower speeds, highway buffeting was noticeable for my 184cm. Ducati does have a taller and wider touring screen available, which should sort that. And I dare say both bigger and smaller screens will become available on the aftermarket in the near future. Cockpit wise, big wide bars give a commanding position on the bike, the height providing a sorted position, especially when standing. Adding to this, the tank is quite short, which makes it easy to get your weight forward. And feet wise, it's widely known that Ducati pegs have always been minimal at best. Thankfully, the Desert X has stepped away from that with some big, grippy and widely spaced off-road oriented pegs that let your feet feel planted and secure. With all the tech on hand, it was easy to miss one of my favourite features on the Desert X. The on-off-road rear brake and gear lever adjustments are simply genius. Rear brake pedal wise, it's a simple pull out and rotate for a high off-road position or lower road oriented position. On the shifter side, just get a 5mm Allen key and you can move between the two available positions. This is really well thought out and incredibly useful in the real world. Talking about standout features, for me, this has to be the front end stability. Once I got a feel for the chassis and the front end's ability to just plow through rocks and ruts, it wasn't long before I was sending water bars and trail features without a thought. Front end feel was even more apparent on this first steep descent we hit. Heading down, sans ABS, the rear wheel was sliding and bucking all over the place. Yet the solid feel and support from the front end just let me steer it to the loose rocks and overgrown junk covering the trail in a manner not dissimilar to a downhill bike. Second attempt had me using the first level of ABS intervention in enduro mode on the rear. And that brought a whole new experience smooth and controlled the whole way down with the ability to slide controllably if need be with simply a touch more pressure on the brake pedal. It's here a really tweak to just how far engine power delivery, traction control and ABS will go into bat for you. It's pretty remarkable. Case in point, putting the bike in wet mode smooths the throttle response out so much you're hard pressed to get the back wheel spinning. I know many will avoid such full and intervention the majority of the time but come the end of a long day out of bike, knowing it's there to get your home's priceless in my book. 